Hello, everybody. Um, I am Martha Alter Hines, and I'm here today with Jordan Smith. And we actually are making this video um, kind of a little bit on the fly because <laughs> we just recorded an interview with Jordan for the Rebecoming the One Symposium. And um, I am feeling really moved by our conversation. And I'm also realizing that this moment that we're in today, we're recording this on June 12th, 2023. Um, this is a really big moment. You know, Pluto just re-entered Capricorn yesterday and we're now in the middle of June, 2023, where there's just a lot of energies I feel like kind of ramping up. Like the, a lot of the outer planets are about to go retrograde in addition to Pluto. And next month, the nodes are switching into Aries and Libra and Venus is gonna go retrograde, which is ruling those nodes. And, you know, it's just a lot, it's really intense right this minute. And a lot of the themes in what's going on astrologically are very exceedingly relevant to um, the symposium, Rebecoming the One. So I, I was feeling called to just have this little chat with Jordan about this moment in time, because I felt like a lot of what we were saying in that recording just now for the symposium, um, I wanted to almost extract out so that it could be like a... Mm, a soothing bomb <laughs> for this moment. Cause I feel like there are a lot of energies that are potentially feeling pretty difficult for people. And one of the reasons I really love astrology is because it helps me to contextualize what the heck, is, what is going on. Uh, and I feel like my, my take Jordan, I'm, I don't know, you tell me how you feel. I, I feel like it's probably only going to get more intense for the next month. Um, that's my, my, sense and then I think also next October with the eclipses it's gonna be pretty intense also um but anyway that's my little intro to why we're here um so thank you yeah, for I would have to agree for sure um we have definitely a lot of intense energies and in energies that are wanting us to have a revision so we're going to be looking at things that we feel like we've already looked at before and are needing to um, integrate a little bit more. I have, uh, you know, it's on the one hand pulling back the layer of the, another layer of the onion and another is that creates space for us to pull in something new to be integrated about that certain dynamic. And so I think anytime as humans, when we're experiencing that, it, it can be, um, pretty intense. So, yeah. yeah. And, um, can you say a little about, uh, your sense you were, you gave this beautiful explanation in the video we just recorded about your sense of what the role of Pluto, you know, kind of peeking its head into zero degrees of Aquarius for a little while. And now it's, as of yesterday, gone back into Capricorn and it's going to do that a few more times <laughs> for like the yeah. next year and a half. Um, yeah. What's, what's your take on that? Yeah. So um, with Pluto having been in Aquarius, we're in this time period since it's retrograded back into Capricorn. If you think about Capricorn um, reflection, it's always like a two steps forward, one step back in order for us to reflect on dynamics. And it's about um, becoming your own authority, being able to ask and answer your own questions. But on a collective level, it is looking at the ways in which society has done society. <laughs> like, you know, and so... Pluto going into Aquarius a few months ago was about the objectivity and about liberation and understanding what conditioning that we're coming into an awareness about that we need to liberate from on a collective level to have a transformation, which is another Aquarius word. And as it's gone back into Capricorn, it's giving us an opportunity to integrate what we learned while Pluto was in Aquarius. Um, but it's also the need to expand upon 
um, the integration process of what we're coming back to re-experience through Pluto being retrograde in this sign on a collective societal level. That way, whenever it goes back into um, Aquarius, then we can liberate some more from those dynamics and have even more integration. So it's this dance of integrating, reflecting, um, liberating, integrating, reflecting, liberating that's happening right now. And it's, you know, if you're looking at when Pluto was in Aquarius, it was ruled by Uranus and Taurus. So we were wanting to liberate from old values and needs that weren't in alignment with us even on a collective level, learning how to listen to ourselves as opposed to the voices of society or, you know, where we've been conditioned, really coming into an objective awareness about our conditioning on a societal level. So also looking at Pluto being square the nodes, the south node as well, really focusing on that Scorpio um, and it was about looking at how we have utilized natural resources, how, um, you know, it, Aquarius is also about really liberating from where we've over-identified with our conditioning and bought into it being true. So now as Pluto is in Capricorn, we're getting to reflect on that and we're re-experiencing its retrograde. It's relive, redo in order to resolve these dynamics that we were coming into awareness that have to do with the patriarchy and society at large. So we're going to be looking at gender issues, you know, societal constructs around gender. We're looking at um, how society, like government does government, how it operates. We're looking at with Pluto being ruled by Saturn and Pisces now, we're really wanting to dissolve man-made um, structures and laws that are not in resonance with the collective in order for a balance to start to occur, a rebalancing of the masculine and the feminine of, through shedding these kind of patriarchal, patriarchal distortions. So as the nodes shift into Libra and Aries, well, the North node right now is in Taurus and Venus has been ruling that. So as we've been clearing out kind of all of these conditioning factors, we've been getting in touch with what our needs and, and what gives us meaning are on a natural sense. If you've been consciously working with this and as the nodes shift, now Venus is going to be the South node ruler. So it's this dance of integrating this into a variety of relationships can you since you've on a personal level if you've been learning what what you value what you need being able to listen to yourself well now are you able to listen to others are you able to give are you able to receive are things in alignment with giving sharing and inclusion or are you abandoning yourself you know mm -hmm. are you masking kind of these libra dynamics so there's this huge integration process that's happening and we're revisiting dynamics in order to resolve them right now so things can come back into balance on a collective level. So we are looking at, you know, wanting to balance the masculine and the feminine within each one of us and on a collective level as well. That's also looking at um, Gaia and understanding that we're not separate from her. We're a part of her. We are nature. And so really wanting to come back into this balance in a holistic, very large way. And we have Jupiter going through Taurus right now that's going to help us connect with this even more. What are the natural principles, Saturn's and Pisces? What are the universal laws that are timeless in nature? As we liberate and, you know, dissolve the man-made ideologies were needing new knowledge to come back into place but that's really more about remembering the mm -hmm. things that we already carry within us that are natural and that's what's going to help put this balance you know things back into balance right now beautiful yes and last week um michelle dench pointed out which i i didn't even catch this <clears throat> last week uh the, in the symposium which for everybody is entirely free well, there are some optional paid things, but there's 34 talks that are totally free, four free panel discussions, um, and it goes for the whole month of June 2023. It is not too late to sign up. Jordan's talk is coming out 
on Sunday, this Sunday, um, and there are all these free talks are available indefinitely for free. No, like, you know, you have 20, 48 hours and then you need to do a VIP upgrade. It's not that kind of a thing. It's, this is meant to be truly holding space for the healing of our collective. Um, and so it is free as long as YouTube exists. And as long as Teachable exists, it, it will exist <laughs> and for free for you, for all of us. So please sign up and the link is here. But um, but last week we had, was the first week of the symposium and it was on the divine feminine. And on each Thursday of this month, we're having panel discussions that go with the themes of each week of the symposium. So last week is the divine feminine. This week is the divine masculine. Next week with your talk is the divine person. And then it's the last week is gonna be bringing us all to wholeness, rebecoming the one. And um, so Michelle Dench was on the, panel discussion last week for the divine feminine and she pointed out that at, literally during the hour and a half of that panel was when um venus came into an exact squaring of the nodes opposite pluto and i was like what <laughs> so crazy and then i find it so fascinating that the the divine person week which is you know holding a lot of uh free talks including yours on conversations around non-binary and transgender needs and just you know what is the whole spectrum of gender gender fluidity all of that um happens to be starting basically on the new moon in gemini <laughs> Love it. So, so i didn't plan any of that right it's like which is wow. so that new moon i looked at it um well, i've looked at it a few times and with venus in and Leo being ruled by the sun, that's going to be conjunct that like, whenever I think of Leo, you know, it's about creative actualization on a very general level. But you always look to the sun to see what am I trying to creatively actualize here. And if Pluto's, go, you know, it went back into um, Capricorn, we're wanting to creatively actualize how we express ourselves in a more natural way through this whole past 18 months, we've been learning about more natural needs and values on a personal and collective level. Well, now we need new language for this, or we need to be able to express this in a different way because we've only been expressing things in a really conditioned way. And so it's this kind of beautiful um, moment of the universe saying, you have the freedom to express yourself however you want to. Like, how do you feel right now? How, would, how are you um, identifying now since you've been doing all of this work and schluffing off all of the distortions um, of conditioning and integrating what feels natural and authentic for you? I just think that it's really the energies right now um, with that are very beautiful. Yeah. It's kind of this reprieve, it. you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I, that ties into kind of the last thing I feel like I want to say also related to what you're saying before, which is that um, with the, you know, how Pluto goes back and forth often over 1.5 times, right? It's a lot of back and forth and back and forth. So there's going to be a lot of back and forth between Pluto in Aquarius and Pluto in Capricorn. And, um, and it can really feel like, like, I know for me personally that I often just wish that there was just a solution and we go from A to B and we're done and we move on and we learn our lesson and life is good but but there's this wisdom of life <laughs> like sometimes it's really frustrating for me but that's not really actually how our soul works or like how life works typically um and we have this need to to reintegrate and do this slowly and gently hopefully over time um wow and I just lost my train of thought what was the last thing you were just saying um, about how we have like creative expression coming up right now for us to creatively actualize that actually got me thinking about transiting Lilith. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Go there. And then, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> so with transiting Lilith being in Virgo right now, that is, we were talking about this earlier. Virgo can really be where you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this again. Like, why am I going through this again? And it's because Virgo is all about purification and purging of dynamics that 
have been long standing, right? Like that it's become um, wired into your, into your being. And even if it's not very good for you. So as you come into this awareness and you're analyzing things, Virgo, you get to exhaust the dynamic by putting one foot in front of the other. And that helps you learn. And it, it purges what doesn't need to be there anymore. And so it's like this one foot in front of the other as we are having Pluto go into Capricorn and we're revisiting these themes. Like Lilith and Virgo is definitely like be an apprentice of your life, mm-hmm. create action. And from that, a counter action happens. This is also pulling in like the nodal shift that's going to be taking place as well. The South Node going to be Libra Lilith will conjunct that during the you pointed it out during the eclipse in October the first one and so as we're doing this purging and purification through putting one foot in front of the other right now as we are re-experiencing dynamics for a full integration to occur Pluto uh Lilith conjuncting that south node and Libra whenever she enters the sign will help us come back into balance it'll help us really be able to understand what we've been working on how we do relationship with everyone not just you know a significant other it's Libra it's everyone so we're learning right now in society about giving sharing and inclusion those are really big themes And Lilith um, transiting Virgo is wanting us to really purge any type of shame, guilt, judgment that stems from patriarchal thoughts surrounding these kind of types of of energies. And um, it's also being a champion for the underdog right now. You know, that's Lilith and Virgo. So really doing this work on a collective level that helps us exhaust this in order for um, balance to occur as she enters the sign of Libra later on. Mm, beautiful. And then when she's on the south node, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the when she's on the south node during the eclipses in October, that's going to be fascinating. Yes, it is because there's a want. There's on a collective level a wanting to return to center and to wholeness and to balance and to harmony with nature like natural universal law and so right now on a collective level we're having a lot of things come up um in order for that to happen so yeah yeah Yeah. and that reminded me of the last thing I was going to say which is um it also feels super like in addition to growth real growth typically not being linear as frustrating as that can be it also feels I love what you said about um you know, who am I now? Like in each moment, like we, I love the feeling that of permission to myself to, to let go, like, like, okay. For example, if I think of a a typical way, maybe I can, again, speak for myself that I have operated and I feel comfortable operating is that let's say I have a goal. Let's pretend I want to create a statue. Like this is a very concrete, not that I would typically make a statue, but maybe someday. So let's say we're going to create a statue, right? We have in our mind, it's going to be a statue of X, Y, Z, a lion or whatever it is. And we have our brain thinks of this thing and we have a goal and we do it and we want the outcome to be what we imagined, right? That's one way of operating. But it's like, if we are, ourselves are this statue, quote unquote, or this being that is becoming or even like, you know, Pluto squaring the nodes, like the caterpillar that's going into the chrysalis and b- over time becoming the new butterfly that's, who's going to emerge or the moth or the whoever. Um, it's like, it feels so important, so key to me that we we feel permission, we give ourselves permission to just be in every single moment as it is and not feel like the right way to be is like not feel pressured or guilty or even frustrated that we can't see in our mind's eye the butterfly we're going to be and then create that thing you know consciously like that's also not really how this works even though I would love for it like some part of me really wants that to be how it works but 
I feel so much relief when I remember and when I hear you, you know, giving that reminder that it's like a, a moment by moment, just yeah. a- perfection's an illusion. And <laughs> the only way that we learn is by putting one foot in front of the other. And Lilith is going to be trining Pluto. Like, so it's like, as we're revisiting all of this stuff and reflecting on it, we need to remember that the values and the effort, like you don't get to be a Michelangelo just like that. It's mm-hmm. from taking action and then learning from the counteraction that it creates. And with Pluto, this is kind of this, this deal that's going on with Lilith and Pluto. And then Pluto is wanting us to reflect and actually see it. So we can be so pessimistic and be like, I don't even feel like there's any growth. But the beauty of Pluto and Capricorn is it says, as you're climbing this mountain, occasionally turn your head and look at where you came from and reflect and see that you've actually, you haven't just been climbing in place. Like you're, you're here and you've been learning and you've been going through this process and it isn't linear. And you take in that beautiful evolutionary astrology teaching of Virgo, like the value is in the effort where I always like to say there's more than one way to get to Denny's. Like this isn't going to look the same for everyone, you know? Um, And it's important to honor your own path and the way that you feel called to do whatever work is arising right now, you know? And just know that as I put one foot in front of the other, as I create action, I create a counter action. And then I get to learn from that moment. And that's how I pull in this Lilith and Virgo being an apprentice. I'm honing this, this area of my life right now by re-experiencing in order to resolve and exhaust. And I get to figure out like, mm, that didn't work last time. <laughs> Let me try something different, you know, and until it feels right and just really honoring that. So beautiful. Yeah. And just to let everybody know the the, the actual talk that Jordan is doing for Rebecoming the One Symposium is a deep dive into Lilith the asteroid. Gemini Brett, actually next, the same week as Jordan's talk is coming out, um, did a talk on, a wonder, amazing talk on the astronomy of Black Moon Lilith, right? So we're going to have two talks actually on Lilith and in the same week, actually two talks on Venus. <laughs> and one of them is by... Uh, one of the talks on Venus is with Verena Burrell, who a lot, and I've done a lot of work with and um, videos with, and then uh, another Venus video with with Louise Eddington. So anyways, it's just interesting how that worked out. Two on Lilith, two on Venus, but all kind of exploring this, yeah, the non-duality, the divine yeah. person through these lenses. It's really interesting. I yeah. love it. Well, and it's so fascinating too, because Venus has a yin and a yang expression as well. And not a lot of people talk about that. So it's like perfect, especially for that week, you know? Um, So yeah. Awesome. Great. Yes. So the link to sign up for this free symposium is with this video. If, even if you're watching this video after June, 2023, still sign up, it's still free. It's still all available. I can't even express how many amazing speakers are part of this. Um, if you happen to be in, into astrology, I would say probably half-ish, 40% of the speakers are astrologers and the rest are not astrologers. So lots of amazing speakers who are not astrologers, like Anne Baring, and it just, I could go on and on and on, Anne Bromley, um, so many, I don't want to try to name them. But if you're into astrology, again, I'm not going to be naming all of them, <laughs> uh, but some of the people you might know are... Melanie Reinhardt, <clears throat> Heather Ensworth, um, Ari Moshe Wolf, Verena Burrell, Louise Eddington, Jordan Smith. <laughs> I mean, again, I'm leaving out people there. So please, please, I apologize ahead of time. Yeah. So many, there's so many, so many amazing people. I can't name everybody, but um, yeah, it's it's unreal <laughs> how, how often. Well, the- I like how your, what you've done is, I like that even though you're a practicing astrologer and yes, you have a lot of astrologers, you also have a lot of 
people who are, because I've looked at the list, um, that are not astrologers, like you said, but they are with movement or they're in mental health or, you know, just all of these different areas. So this is like a symposium that is holistic in nature. Like it's going to get you at every end. And I love that. It's not just um, kind of botched into one special area or expertise. And I think that that's one of the many beauties of your symposium. So awesome. Yeah. And actually this week, the divine masculine week has a lot of speakers who are, are very active and very well known in the, um, nature connection world. Um, like John Young is one person who people tend to know of who are into nature connection and nature education and all of that. So there's a lot of conversation that weaves together, um, this reality that we are earth and that we need to re-remember that we are, you know, Taurus, uh, North node with Jupiter in Taurus. I'm like, yep, there we go. There's that theme. <laughs> it's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. And, and how that our connection with earth is so tied into our relationship with gender and it's Absolutely. really beautiful. Yeah. And we touch on that too, in your talk on Lilith too. So yeah. anyway, Lilith and Virgo, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> it, all connects. it all connects. Awesome. I love it. Great. And we'll put all of our contact information with the video too. Anything else you feel like you want to say? No, just be gentle with yourselves as we're all going through this. You know, I always like to kind of leave on a positive note, like sometimes, um, you know, with astrology, like there can be like these, I like to call them like doom and gloom kind of like weeks. Like yes. it's like, I'm like, man, I'm not trying to make this heavy, but this was really <laughs> heavy. <laughs> so I always try to, so yeah, this is a, it's a really, we're in a very beautiful time to be able to reconnect and remember whom we naturally are mm -hmm. and to help the collective by just doing that inner work and right now we're getting to revisit you know these old kind of structures held within in order to do that and to exhaust and purge you know those dynamics that really aren't in resonance with whom each one of us are on a soul level anymore because they're more of a patriarchal conditioning mm -hmm. so we're in this like momentous beautiful time of understanding what natural values and principles are and really wanting to reintegrate that back as we excavate and throw off the old and so I love what the astrology is reflecting because I know that it can be really incredible for the collective when consciously utilized and so um and I mean, even if it's not, it, it's going to, evolution is going to proceed no matter what, but it, it is really, um, you know, just keep doing the inner work. That's what I want to say to people that as Pluto's in Capricorn, there can be this feeling of when you slide back or you feel like you're revisiting something that, oh my gosh, it's all null and void. Everything I've been working on, it's just, I got to start all over again. And mm -hmm. that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. And I want people to remember that, that actually whenever you are coming into an awareness, as a lot of us are right now, and we're remembering, there's a, a back and forth that happens as you're integrating, you're not going to know it, this is new. Like it, it's, you're, we're all literally like rewiring and wanting to vibrate energetically at a different level. And so we're getting our sea legs and there can be growing pains and to be gentle with yourself and to know that if you find yourself doing something that you thought that you exhausted, to not be judgmental or shameful of yourself, that actually the fact that you know when you're doing it means that you're aware and that means that there has already been growth. And so to really understand that and know that as you keep trying, as you come into more awareness, things aren't going to be perfect, but it is a journey and every little bit does count. And I want people to remember that as Pluto is, you know, in Capricorn right now. I second all of that. 
<laughs> Wonderful. Um, well, yes, and I we would love to see all of you at the Rebecoming the One Symposium. If it calls to you, please do sign up and um, we'll see you again soon. <laughs> yes, this was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>